All right. Hello, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining. Today, that's the uh, Tupelo container deep dive. So we already did one a few years ago, and uh, I want to make a small update on where we are right now, what are we doing. Um, it's uh, not going to take very long, but uh, it depends on the questions and the interactions that we have. Um, and I hope to uh, do another deep dive soon if I see that there are some topics we need to uh, we need to dig a little bit more. So um, I'm going to share my slides. So the slides are in the chat as well, and I will follow the link to the mailing list. Um, just making sure, can you can you hear me? Can someone in the chat write yes or no? Yes, okay, perfect. Yeah, okay. So you can hear okay. you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm... I'm going to share my screen. All right, so you should see the slides in a few. Yeah. Oh, you should see my slide. OK, so. Um, yeah, a bit of history uh, before. So I have a slide about of the history on the containerization of uh, Tripolo. So um, everything started in Pike with the uh, containerized compute nodes. That was that was the first experimentations, and um, we um, we introduce uh, the containerization by using Docker. Uh, and to make the interface between Tripolo and Docker, uh, we we wrote a tool that that is called Punch and that is uh, still used uh, until now. And, and I will talk about it later. But that was uh, that was uh, how it started. Um, Queens was uh, a stabilization and also uh, like the finishing up the work on the containerization. We 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 did the controllers and we we containerized uh, a lot of more services than than in pike um, we still have a few services that are not containerized in queens uh, and that would be containerized later but uh, most of them like the one you know would be would be containerized in queens so again that's that's for the over cloud uh, in rocky we introduced the containerized under cloud uh, and still using docker um, however, in, in in Stein, as you know, we replaced um, we replaced Docker by uh, a new tool uh, developed by Red Hat. It's called Podman. Uh, it's actually not only Podman. There are many other uh, tools that turn around Podman, but like uh, Builda and and some other things like Scopeo. Um, so the new tooling that replaced Docker has has been introduced in Stein. Um, in train, we don't have any major changes in the container world. Um, and uh, in usury, we have um, we have introduced a new uh, Ansible role um, in, uh, in, in in with the goal to replace Punch. And uh, there is a working progress to uh, to backport that work to train. Um, I have something in the chat. Can you okay, can now, you see the now slides? Sudden, now I can suddenly see the slides. Before I okay. I, I could just see a white box. Ah uh, okay. So I will I will stay uh, on this screen like this. Um, okay, so that was for the history. Um, and uh, as you know, in train there is not much done on on the on, on the containers, uh, but um, but we are working on the backports again. So I will I will come back on this later. Um, so yeah, where is Punch? Why uh, I, uh, why are we removing it? So um, a few months ago, if if you if you saw it, I I saw I sent a few uh, a few uh, updates and presentations about uh, why would we would remove Punch. Um, there is a link uh, I can share it in the chat right now, but um, basically. Um, the goal of removing Punch is part of the simplification work of Tripolo. 
uh, reducing the number of tools and also uh, aligning the deployment framework to use Ansible. So Punch was, it's a nice tool written in Python, uh, but it, it's, it's, uh, there is an extra layer of uh, interface within Punch that uh, we decided to don't maintain in the future, not maintaining in the future. And, um, and instead of that, doing more, uh, uh, using more the Ansible modules to control the, the container's lifecycle. So um, I'm going to uh, explain a little bit more how it works after. Uh, but uh, if, if, if you're interested by why do we remove Punch, uh, there is this uh, presentation that I think has more details than, uh, than we, can, we can talk today. Um, there is a backlog of tasks to remove Punch in Storyboard. You can take a look as well if you're interested to know uh, what has been done so far. Um, and um, like from a high level, uh, removing Punch means that we, we, have, uh, we have introduced a Podman module in Ansible. So the Podman container module, um, that uh, is, it, it's not yet in Ansible upstream. Uh, it's part of Triple right now, and it's probably going to move somewhere else more like mainstream at some point, but um, anyone can use it. It's not just for Triple it's really like uh, like the Docker module. Um, and we we have a role in Triple that's called Triple O Container Manage. It's a role that will just consume that that module. So I'm I'm going to show you a little bit after how it works. Um, there is less code to maintain, so that's great for people who work on those things. Uh, and also, it's um, I think it's easier to understand how the containers are deployed. It's easier to reproduce, to debug, and of course, integrating with the rest of, of the framework, like the updates, the upgrades, and just the deployments in general. So, um, yeah, that was for the removal of Punch. Um, so what doesn't change? Of course, we, we, we didn't change, uh, like we, we didn't break all everything in, in just suddenly. Uh, we try to maintain the same uh, architecture and, and just just changing the tool underlying deploy the containers. But what doesn't change is that we still have three types of container. The, the containers that are used to generate config files where when Puppet is used, Puppet is still used to generate uh, the configuration files for most of the services, like the OpenStack services, uh, but as well MySQL, RabbitMQ, HAProxy, and those kind of services. They they still use Puppet to generate config files. So um, I'm going to show you a bit later how it works, but um, those containers are still there. And uh, previously, they, they were managed by a script that is called container puppet.py, which uh, is living in uh, triple O hit templates. So um, with, the new, with the new tooling, we are getting rid of the scripts, and we use Ansible uh, to be aligned with the other containers. Um, but you have to know that before, before train, uh, you would have these scripts. And, um, um, I can explain a little bit as, as well uh, how the script work after. Um, so uh, the second type of container, we have uh, the service containers, the one that, you know, like Keystone, like Nova API or Neutron API. So those, those containers that just uh, start and the service will be, uh, will be up and running. So uh, those, those containers are managed by Punch. And uh, the layout is also defined in triple hit templates. And um, the last type of container, that's the one that are managed by uh, Pacemaker, the uh, Docker or, or Podman resource agents. Um, so um, th those ones are the uh, HA containers that, that uh, Punch or Ansible doesn't, doesn't touch, doesn't see, doesn't control, doesn't care. So those ones are only managed by Pacemaker, and that will remain like this for now. Um, so th again, those things didn't change since forever, and it's, there is no plan to change, uh, to change that. Um, can someone confirm that you see the slides? Nate said that he was seeing the slides before. 
Well, I, I was seeing sort of a weird split screen where I saw the title slide. Like right now I see the title slide, but I think you're on. Slide. Can you see the slide right now? I, Just the I white see box. the. Yeah, right okay. now I see two windows. Okay, let me see. Okay, that should be better now. That should be that should be better now. Now, now I can see you. You see the slides? No, I no you. you. Yeah, I use awesome VM. Weird when I share my stuff. Um. Yeah, let me try another one. This could work, maybe. You see something or? Uh, still no screen share, just seeing you. Okay. But um, another try. And now you see the anything or? Now it's just kind of a big gray nothing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh... Well, you shared the slides. I mean, we can just follow along. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the slide number uh, number seven. It's weird because I picked the screen in the. What what do you see exactly? Just a big gray box. Big gray box. Yeah. Emilyn, can someone else share the slide and uh, you let us know when to next? Ah yeah, yeah you can uh, share your screen I guess. Uh, yeah, if someone wants to try sharing the screen, that would be sweet. There you yeah. go. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. I don't know who it is, but thank you. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so next slides. So I'm, I'm going to present what changed exactly. So, uh, on the next slide, slide number nine. Um, so... Container Puppet is being removed. Um, the I can see IRC right now. Guys, we are seeing now IRC of someone. Yeah, there you go, girl. <laughs> Just stay okay, on there. perfect. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay, so um, yeah, the script, uh, the script is being removed. Uh, the script was kind of a mess to me. Like, uh, if you take a look, that was uh, reading some JSON files on the host and uh, running Docker or Podman manually with Python magic and stuff. So that was kind of something I wanted to get rid of. Uh, but the script was useful to generate the containers that are named uh, container-puppet-something, like uh, MySQL or where those containers will be only executed during the deployments and they will be used to generate a config file and put the config file into um, something that we call a config volume. The config volume, you, I think you saw it in the var lib config data. That's the directory on the host where we store all the configurations that are byte mounted to the containers. So, for example, um, if you would if you would deploy Neutron API, uh, so you have the container that will be might that would byte mount, um, you know, like the configuration files that were generated from var lib config data Neutron uh, puppet generated uh, sorry puppet generated Neutron etc slash Neutron to the container. So that's an example, but we have more configurations. We have also sometimes some uh, uh, 
system configurations that we bind mount as well. But um, what, what you want to understand is that uh, those containers, they are kind of ephemeral. And uh, once the puppet has executed, the, the container will be stopped uh, and, and it, will, it will not be run again. Uh, the configuration files will be uh, stored in uh, var lib config data. And uh, every, time, uh, the, every time the configuration file will change, we would update uh, a MD5 file for each volume. So we know that if Neutron has a new configuration, uh, we can check the MD5 if it changed and we can restart, uh, we can restart the, the container. So, um, so the containers still exist in the, with the new tooling, but their configuration is generated by Ansible module that is called container puppet config. So the, the thing just merged like this week which is why I want to present that early. But the way it works is that uh, we basically have, uh, we maintain the previous interface that, that uh, configure the container. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so if you take a look at uh, the example given on slide 10, um, If you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So yeah, um, uh, it's just my my computer is slow. Sorry. Oh, don't worry. So um, as you can see, so that's uh, that's a JSON file for the HA proxy container. The, sorry, the container dash puppet dash HA proxy. That configuration format um, is is the format that was used before. Uh, for the for the startup containers, the one that you know, like the the punch will be using to start HA proxy. So now with the new tooling, we also use that configuration to generate the puppet containers. So they can be uh, they can be understood the same way, and they can be used as as well with the same tooling uh, without a Python script. So. Um, in, in, in this configuration, you can see that um, uh, we specify a, a container image. We have some environment variables. The variables here, they are used in the container puppet script that run uh, as an entry point. That's, that's all the infos we need to generate the config files. We have the uh, puppet class. We have the puppet tags that we want to run. Uh, we have the step number, and we have a few other uh, things that we need to know. Uh, but other than that, we also have the entry point. So the entry point is the script that will be executed when the container starts. So um, when we start the container puppet containers, they will immediately execute the entry point, and once finished, they will quit and they will stop. So that's the goal. We just generate config files, and, and then later we can start the services with the right uh, volumes. Um, so speaking of volumes, uh, you can see that um, we have a list of volumes. And if you go, if you, if you look at one of them, it's var lib config data in read write. So um, in, in this directory, we will put the configurations for HA proxy. So um, wh when I will do a demo later, you will see uh, what I'm talking about. Um, so that's uh, that's for the Puppet Containers config. Uh, and uh, what you see here is what we had already before for the startup containers. But uh, with the new tooling, we, we, um, we, we now use the same interface and the same, uh, the same Ansible playbooks to Manage those containers, so it's uh, it's easier to understand, I think. So, um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so, um, like I said, we are replacing Punch by uh, Ansible. Um, so, Punch, if you don't know much, what is it? Punch was a it's it's an abstraction between Trupolo containers config and uh, the 
the the uh, container API, so Docker Compose or Podman uh, Podman interface. Um, so basically, you would define uh, the container config in a JSON file, and 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 behind this, we have some tooling that can read the JSON file and run uh, the Podman commands to you know like create the containers. So the abstraction is now managed by uh, an Ansible module that uh, that will be upstream in Ansible, but right now it's in Triple O. Um, it's called Podman Container, and uh, we have also some other modules like the Podman Container infos and some other things. But uh, Podman Container module is the main one, uh, and we have a new role that is called Triple O Container Manage. That will uh, read the, the 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 container configs, so the JSON files, and uh, just create the containers based on that config, and that's something that uh, that is uh, repeatable, and you can uh, you can you, you can easily uh, run playbooks to deploy containers. We will we will show that before uh, after I have a demo on that. Um, so the the container configs are still in the same place as before. They are in var lib triple o config container startup config. So that place already exists before. But just a reminder, that's the place where you can find the uh, the container configs per step. So um, if you want to know, uh, like the the Neutron API container, oh, I want to know. What's the what's the volumes that that are used for this, this container? So you can go into that directory, uh, and you can go in the step four, and you will see the neutron.json or neutronapi.json file, and you can go uh, take a look. Um, then um, so that's thank you. So that's the. Uh, an example of the uh, the startup config. So as you can see, that's very similar to the Puppet config. It's the same layout, it's the same interface. Um, but basically, uh, what you see here is uh, um, um, the the image, and uh, there is a, a cola cola parameter to copy the config, and then you have the bind mounts. Um, if you look at the bind mounts in that case, so that's for the HE proxy. Um, you can see that um, we have uh, the, um, the generated config uh, in in HProxy that is byd mounted to the varlib cola config files uh, because the cola containers will when they when they start they will copy the config uh, to the etc directory so that's something that we don't have to do ourselves it's 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 magically happening in cola. So uh, the way it works right now is that we just have to byte mount uh, the uh, the uh, HA proxy uh, config volume into the cola config files uh, directory in the container. Um, we also byte mount a few other things like the logs and the varlib HA proxy uh, and uh, the certificates from the host and some other things. So um, yeah. Um, the the networking like related volumes like the etc host and other things that's because we run uh, containers in in net host uh, in net host uh, so we use the, the the host network for the containers uh, but that's something that has been there like forever and uh, there is no plan to to change that for now. Um, if you can go to the next slides about the benefits on why we did all of this. So what's cool with that is um, we have um, uh, we, we are basically we aligned the way that containers are configured between the puppet containers and the startup containers. So um, if you had a bad experience with how to generate the puppet containers and you had to run Python script and find the right arguments and stuff. So that that thing is kind of like easier now because the config is is written on the host and you can easily find it and execute it with Ansible. Um, I will show you how after. Um, the whole container deployment is driven by Ansible, 
there is no more like uh, extra tooling. Uh, the, 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 it's only based on modules and roles that you can, uh, you can reuse from the generated playbooks in Trupolo, but you can also write your own playbook. Uh, and I will, I will explain later a bit of the roadmap, but we have some ideas for the futures regarding the playbooks. Um, the, yeah, the container configs are easier to find and understand. They share the same interface. Um, we uh, we have a few ideas ab about how we can use that new interface, but basically uh, we could uh, have a single playbook that will be useful for the hotfix process. So uh, you could you could have one playbook to build a new image, push the image to re to the registry, and deploy the container from the new image. So all of this is. Uh, it's 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 something that uh, could do before with Paunch, but that was not really well integrated in Ansible. So uh, that's something we are working on right now, um, preparing some uh, playbooks and documenting that, testing that. So uh, the, we hope to make the uh, the hotfix uh, container hotfix delivery easier uh, for later. Um, um, and now uh, I'm. I don't know if I'm going to share my screen um, and if it will work because I have a demo that I recorded, uh, but I'm going to try anyway. All right. Can you see something? Yes. You see my terminal? Yep. Uh, oh yeah. Slides. Okay. Can can you see my terminal or you see the slides? I, I see the terminal and I see thin downloads. Okay. Perfect. Um. I see the slides, by the way. Um, Carl, could you uh, could you unshare your screen then, please? Okay. I wasn't uh, sharing anymore. Okay. I'm I'm gonna run the the demo and comment. Uh, so uh, if if you don't see anything moving, let me know. Yeah, just attached to a Tmux. Yeah, we'll see how that works. I'm gonna play again. I don't think I didn't know ASCII Cinema played well with uh, Tmux. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm 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 not gonna play it. I'm gonna to show you live. Um, all right, so um, so yeah, um, with the new tooling, if you go in var lib config data, so those things, they don't change. So uh, all the directories here, they are the, uh, the what, what we called before the config volumes. So if I go to Keystone, for example, I will see uh, the files that are needed to be uh, byte mounted to the Keystone container. For example, you would see the etc stone and keystone.conf. So that's the configuration file Keystone that is generated by Puppets. Those those directories they are managed by um, they are they are managed by the the container Puppet. Uh, that we talked before. Uh, if you want to know um, how the container uh, puppet is generated for Keystone, you go to um, you go to var lib triple o config um, container puppet config 
Um, you're looking for Keystone. So you have the, uh, at step one, we have the container puppet Keystone file. And uh, yeah, you can see the uh, the image, you can see the environment, so you can see what puppet classes do we include in the manifest to execute uh, the, the container, um, the puppet tags, because we only, well, we filter the, the puppet catalog by some tags, not uh, create the services, for example. Um, uh, the entry points, the byte mounts, and all those things. Um, what else? Yeah, so that was for the puppet containers. Uh, by the way, you, you can see here the step six. So, and you may wonder why I see step six here. And, uh, it's a, a container that is run at step one. Um, it's, it's a bit weird to explain, but, um, to, to generate configuration files, we, uh, we tell puppet that we are the step six. Because if you go in, uh, in the puppet, in the Trupolo, puppet Trupolo module, um, it's, it only deploy Keystone after the step three. So if you say you are step one, uh, the Keystone configuration file won't be generated. So that's, that's something a bit of like the legacy from, uh, um, the, the previous deployments without containers. So, um, uh, I just want to show you basically why, um, If you go here, you can see that we include the class Keystone only after step four. So that's why that for all the services, uh, we fake the step number only at the step one to get the uh, the containers. Uh, if, if you look at um, the steps, um, you can see that, um, sorry, step one. Uh, you can see that we, we specify step six for all the services. So they, so they generate the config files like the service will be deployed. Um, anyway, so, um, and now, uh, in the same directory, you have the container startup config that, that is already there since, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, Queens. So it was before named, um, Docker startup config, we renamed to container startup config. So if you go in that directory, uh, you will see Anybody else just lose audio? Can you hear me? Can hear you, Nate. Yeah. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay. Um, okay, so now uh, how you would uh, reproduce, for example, um, how you would generate uh, the, the container puppet MySQL. So, with, so that, that's done by the Triple hit templates uh, uh, playbooks, but basically if you want to reuse, um, just to generate the MySQL container, you could, uh, you could write, uh, this playbook and, uh, we, we will try to make it simpler as well and, uh, maybe integrate that playbook to the CLI at some point, the, tri the uh, Triple O client CLI, uh, so you don't have to write that playbook, but basically, um, I'm gonna print that playbook and execute on the slides. Okay, so uh, Ansible playbook, uh, container, puppet. So oh, it's a demo, so it will fail. Sorry for that. Maybe not, I don't know. So um, the playbook is basically uh, reading the configuration and uh, creating the container uh, in in Podman.
it's waiting for the container to be uh, exceeded uh, because like I said, the entry point is a bash script that runs Puppet and grab the configuration that was generated and put that configuration into the config volume, if you remember. So right now, Puppet is running. And um, yeah, I got, a, I, got a, I got a bad exit code, by the way. So that's interesting. So I got an error, actually. So that's great. We can go figure out how to debug. So the, the container Puppet MySQL script failed to execute. And the log says, uh, you go figure out in var logs container std out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to var log containers std out. And, um, and I'm going to check the container mysql.log. Okay, so in... So that's the container log that I that I uh, that I can use, and uh, I can see that there is a there is an error here um, uh, in the MySQL module. So I, I need to go. Uh, I'm I'm not going to debug that now, but that's an error that uh, might be a problem in Puppet MySQL, or that's. Um, what I want to show you here is how you can reproduce the, those containers and how you can debug them. So um, the playbook that you see on the left is something that is uh, in, in Tupelo hit templates uh, that is uh, executed during the deployments and during the updates. But if you want to take out this playbook and create your own, like I did, like this one, uh, it's easier, and you can you can filter which container you want to uh, you, you want to de you want to deploy you want to test. Uh, the error on the right was not expected, but I'm glad we have it. So you can see uh, uh, that we have all the logs here. So every time Ansible we create a container, it will put the logs uh, in that directory in var logs containers std out. And uh, if you recreate a container, it will create a new log files and uh, archive the previous one. So you have history on the logs as well. Um, so that was for the Puppet containers. And now um, if you go, uh, uh, I have an example for the startup containers. I think I have one. Yeah, container startup. So the startup container on this one, I took Keystone as an example. So uh, this one is just going to start Keystone on step three. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to stop Keystone, remove the container, and show you um, uh, how I can, uh, I can start it. So um, I'm going to do a temctl. Podman RM Okay, so we don't have any more uh, the Keystone container. And now we are going to uh, deploy the Keystone container. So the, the module is taking care of creating the systemd services, uh, the health checks, and uh, it's running also in async. So we can give a list of containers, and Ansible will uh, parallelize the creation of the containers. So you can, uh, you can make it faster. So the Keystone container was created. Uh, so let's go and do a systemctl superlo. Uh, stages Keystone. So Keystone is up and running, as you can see. Stack RC, stack and list. Okay, so Keystone is running. So, um, yeah, what I wanted to show you here is that um, you can have this playbook uh, for you, 
like if you're working on Neutron API and you just want to uh, uh, recreate the Neutron API container, um, you can use this simple playbook to generate the container again. And if you want to hack in the container configuration, you can go in var lib uh, triple o config. You would go in uh, if you, if you want to hack in the startup container, you would go in the container startup config. Uh, and uh, here you, you need to find where Neutron is. So I think it's at step four. So uh, you can go hack in the uh, Neutron DHCP, for example. And uh, and here you can change the volumes. You can change the image if you want to test a new image. For example, uh, uh, if uh, Nate is working on a custom uh, in in a new patch in Neutron. Uh, and you build a new image with the change. Uh, you can change the uh, the image here. You can change the tag, and uh, in in a few uh, a few seconds you can generate the container uh, with that playbook. So uh, it's 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 much easier uh, as well to integrate that with the rest of the the, the deployment framework, uh, especially for the upgrades and and some other things. Um, let me think if I had something else to show. Um, well, I can ask for questions. If you have any questions about those configurations, uh, if it makes sense to you, uh, and if I missed to explain something, uh, feel free to, uh, to ask anything now. So I have a query. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So with Pons, we had an option to uh, instead of overriding JSON, we can from command line we can pass an option what parameter for JSON we want to override. So is it possible with this new approach? Uh, I didn't understand the question. What's possible? So uh, with Pons, we had an option to override specific parameter from the JSON. Oh yeah. In the oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good question. Yes, there is an option. Um, and uh, actually, the patch is very new. Uh, so yeah, there is an option. Um, if if you want to, for example, here, um, let let me uh, find it. Um, there is an option. It's called um, triple O. I'm, I'm going to show you how it works. Like this. So you could do something like this. So if you want to override the HA proxy image, or the MySQL as well. That's just a uh, dictionary. Good. Um, you have to keep in mind that when you do that, it doesn't update the JSON files on the host. It will just uh, update the containers, right? So uh, that's that's handy for like a one-off change. But if you want the change to be persistent, uh, if later you're gonna run a like a over cloud update or something. You will have to change the uh, parameter in Triple O as well. Okay. The so same with the points as well. Points also was not updating the JSON files. Yeah. Yeah. The same. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That was a good question. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, let me see if I can show anything else. Um, uh, well, I, yeah. I have another. Yeah. I have another question. Um, currently, punch when is uh, so it decides if it needs to restart the container oh, yeah. based on oh, yeah. change on configuration. So this is roughly the same idea. That, that will function the same. You first calculate the configuration and then yeah. and then if there yeah. is a change. And uh, so punch was doing this by um, batch stopping all container. 
first and then batch restarting them afterwards, which uh, created like unnecessary uh, long time of for yeah, some container yeah. to be stopped. Is it going to be like um, so? so that, yeah, I can yeah, I can answer, I can, that, I question. Can answer that question. Yeah. Okay. Can you mute? Can you? Yeah. Okay, so uh, at every step we run uh, we run the Podman containers infos module, which is collecting all the infos about Podman. So it's basically running uh, a Podman inspect for all the containers just once per step, and uh, and then we take that that big dictionary and we compare with the step uh, data once. And here, that's the function that figure out if uh, which containers needs to be deleted. And I try to put some comments to explain why this container is skipped, why is it deleted. So um, yeah, that's basically uh, Punch was doing inspect for each container, and even more than one for each container. Right now, we do one inspect per step. And then we we take this data and we conf we compare with what the, what the JSON files looks like and figure out if we need to restart them or not. So yes, it's much faster than before on that front. Um, this function is in triple O and Sybil. It's in a filter, and it's 100% uh, covered by unit test. That's something also we improved. We we actually have a, a unit test that have all the scenarios figure out if containers needs to be deleted or not. So that's also a good improvement, testing. Is that answering your question, I think? Uh, partly. Uh, the other part would be, um, do, do you stop them all? before recreating them all, or is it like for no. each container, you take the decision to stop, start, or which So that be... didn't change. Okay. That didn't change, no. We, uh, uh, I know there is a, there is a, a, a Nerefi about that, I think from okay. Lukash, uh, and he was asking if uh, Punch would be able to start the containers that are stopped before. And I think uh, that was causing issues with uh, some some third-party containers that are stopped on purpose. So I think we were in a position where we say before any operation, you have to make sure that the containers that you want are started before. Otherwise, they won't be started automatically. Um, and if that, if 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 you need, if you think it's a bad idea and you sh we should change it, that's something we can discuss. Uh, I I just think that the the last time we took a look, it was kind of like dangerous to start the containers that were stopped because they should not be stopped by the installer. Or they should be stopped by some by someone on purpose. Like if there is any wrong image or wrong container, I don't know. That's, I think, why we, we took that decision. Um, okay, so um, I have one more slide about the roadmap. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen, but I'm not sure it will work. See? Okay. Can you see the slides or still not working? Yeah, it's working. Oh, it's working. Cool. Okay. So um, a bit of the roadmap. Uh, so in in uh, usury cycle, so the current master, we switch the undercloud to be using the the new thing by default. Uh, but if you want to disable it, if you still want to use Punch, uh, there is an option that is called uh, under cloud underscore enable punch. So you just turn that to true and, and you can deploy with punch. Um, if, if you have an under cloud or even an over cloud that is deployed with punch, you can switch that option to be false 
and run the redeploy or you can run minor updates and that will switch the container to be using Ansible instead of Punch. We we tested it and we we are going to work on having more CI on that, but that's something that is possible. Uh, the other way around, I'm not sure it's working. Like coming from Ansible and going back to Punch is not something that uh, I think will work correctly, but uh, that's something we can try. Um, the overcloud and standalone are in progress to, uh, for the default. Uh, uh, there is a patch in the, in, in below right now that is waiting, but, um, the default has not changed for them yet, but that's going to be the case very soon, I think. Uh, the backports to train are in progress. Uh, everything was submitted this week. Uh, after uh, USP 16 GA, so we are targeting uh, uh, an, a Z-stream of uh, a downstream version, but in upstream stable train, we will backport everything from master for that work, so to be uh, uh, as stable as it is it on, on master. Um, uh, on the roadmap as well, we are uh, discussing about how we can improve the way we deliver the hotfix, and in general, uh, for the developers as well, when they want to update their uh, local images uh, with the new new patch or new uh, yeah new service, we would basically um, provide a, a, an easier way to do it. Uh, improving the debugging experience as well, uh, we have ongoing work to uh, uh, help uh, people to debug when containers fail and when there is something wrong during. Uh, the deployments on, on that, so that's something we, we work on. And uh, the last thing, I, I, we, I need to uh, talk with the uh, HA people and see if uh, the uh, the pacemaker resource agent could reuse that same uh, um, container uh, config interface on the containers. That's also uh, in the roadmap. Um, and uh, yeah, we have uh, seven minutes left for uh, questions or if you want me to go back to my terminal and show something, I would be I would be happy to to do so. I have one question with with respect. Yeah, to go the, ahead, Yachin. So yeah. uh, when we are doing we are grade, so the what will happen to the older files that will exist in the system? Will those be deleted? Because I think they will cause confusion if both exist there. So the files are still the same with the new uh, with the new tooling. Uh, so, like I said, so the the container startup config files uh, are going to be the same uh, between Ansible and Punch. So those ones remain; they don't change. And uh, the new files for the container puppet uh, configs. So those ones will be created during the upgrade, of course. Uh, but otherwise, that's it. Uh, Punch doesn't have any other files. There is nothing else to be removed or cleaned up. Um, there I, is one thing. If I understood, so if I understood yeah. correctly, now the files are created with different names, uh, like different different directories. Step one for step one, step two. We have different directories now. So no, that that was already the case in in train. Okay. In train, we okay. we had this directory already, uh, and we we made it uh, per step instead of one big JSON file. That was a that was a change. Um, actually, um, if if I go back to my terminal, uh, let me see if uh, you can my terminal again. Try. Um, so if you look at my terminal, um, you would have the container uh, startup config. There is a readme here that says that all the the configs move to um, to to the um, to the container startup config. So um, per step uh, before uh, in train. Uh, by the way, the, G, the old JSON file is, is still there in train. We just uh, cleaned that up in uh, Usuri. But in train, you would have here 
uh, a big uh, a big big um, file like if it would be called container startup config dash uh, step one dot json and in this file you would have all the containers for step one so we split that out in per service per container so it's easier to find and to reuse when we need uh, so that thing was be be between train and usury and um, yeah the, the only thing that changed is if you remember in uh, the startup config you have the files that had the, the hashed prefix in the names so you would have hashed heproxy.json and you would have heproxy.json so that thing doesn't exist anymore we only have one file per per service so it's easier to understand um i hope uh, i hope uh, you you see what i mean but uh, if you don't that's fine there is only one file at the end uh, we simplified that a little bit that was some legacy as well um and uh, yeah that's uh, pretty much it um if you have more questions you can ask me on irc or by email or anytime um that's i, I would be very happy to to help uh, especially uh, on, on that topic so um thank you for listening and thank you for the help on the slides and sorry for my screen and the mess I should use Windows, I know. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So have a good day and uh, we talk soon.